sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him. garment risen from the stairs of death. His word he has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Come then, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his i yeah. 
Good morning everyone and could I extend a very warm welcome to you all to this the online service for Belsill Central Parish Church. Could I also extend a very warm welcome to any visitors who may be tuning in. We do hope you'll enjoy the service this morning. I have a few birthdays to mention today. Uh, yesterday, Saturday the 21st of August was Emma Cowan's birthday. Emma, I believe you were nine yesterday. So on behalf of everyone at Belsill Central Parish Church, we do hope you had a great day. Uh, today, Sunday, Sunday the 22nd, is Susan McLeish and Tom Taylor's birthdays. Again, to Tom and Susan, we do hope you'll have a great birthday today. And this coming Tuesday, Tuesday the 24th, 
is the birthday of May White and my good self. Uh, May, I believe you are 90 on Tuesday, so on behalf of everyone at Belsa Central, we do hope you'll have a great day. With regard to the reopening of the church uh, at long last, the session met last week and we have agreed to the various requirements and protocols by the Church of Scotland and the Government and we are preparing to open the church for Sunday worship on Sunday the 5th of September. Uh, the various uh, protocols, I say, are in place, uh, social distancing, etc. Uh, if you wish to come along to the service, could you let me know, please, by phone? My phone number is 747144. We still have to keep a record of the people attending for track and trace, etc. So that's the number to call. And sa Sunday, the 5th of uh, September, first service back in the church at the usual time, 11 o'clock. Thank you very much indeed for your attention, and I do hope you'll enjoy the service this morning. Good morning everyone. I hope you're safe and well. King of all the earth, creator of the universe, holy triune God, from everlasting to everlasting, you are Lord. Our souls long for your courts, O Lord of hosts. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. Our hearts and our flesh rejoice in the living God. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. We have found a home in your presence, our King and our God. Happy are we who dwell in your house and are ever praising you. Who is like our God, the one who strengthens his people, the one who reveals himself to all who seek after him? This is our God, the Holy One. Come before him with thanksgiving and offer him the sacrifice of praise.
God, you know us well. We are not always at our best. Sometimes we get weary, our smiles fade, our energy runs low, and a delped state, and we come, we become bad company. Sometimes we fail to look after ourselves and blame ourselves for unmet needs. Sometimes we despair that our good work does not count for much, and we, we. Treat into perilous, hear our sorrow and untangle us, good Lord. You do not condemn, you forgive, you do not create lost causes, but, but human beings in your own beautiful likeness recreate us today for your love's sake. Amen. Ancient of days, holy mystery, El Shaddai. God, we call on you by the names we have taking on our lips, words that cannot contain you. You are always more, and as we turn to you, you have already turned to us, and called on us, my people, my beloved, to wait before you and meditate on you. This is what restores us to know again that you are the living God. This is what reawakens our hope. So we gather in your presence and offer you our love and thanks for keeping the world turning, for infusing all that exists with the breath of your spirit, for looking on us with warmth and pride, because we are yours. We pray in the names of your community of love, source, saviour, sustainer. Amen. Welcome everyone, still in the 34th psalm just as we're in john's gospel for much of these weeks we also find ourselves exploring the 34th psalm and the psalmist is always inviting us to recognize god's loving gracious merciful compassionate presence in all of life the good the bad the ugly the indifferent and so let us pray together shall we taste and see that the lord is good a constant refrain from that psalm and that heartbeat of prayer. Gracious God, we say the words and we long for our lives to follow thereafter. To taste, yes, in the midst of the anguish that the psalmist feels, and we do too, not only adoring, praising and loving you, but also recognizing that at times the world doesn't make sense, that life is fragile and broken, vulnerable and indeed in need of your healing your gracious presence and your care. And so, yes, we adore you, for that is instinctively how we are created and shaped to be, as those who give thanks and praise and lose ourselves in loving adoration, who stretch our minds and our hearts beyond what is immediately obvious, to delight in the sense of belonging to faith and a family that has stretched down throughout the ages, people grappling with you and, yes, also adoring and losing themselves in loving wonder of you. Loving and gracious God, who has spoken in Jesus Christ to remind us indeed that he is the fulfillment of the psalmist's prayer and desire. He is the one that reminds us that you, loving and gracious God, allow your sun to shine on the righteous and the unrighteous. And even as we ask many questions of society and life as it is, and even as times we are perplexed by it and rail against the wind and the storms, the fire and the destruction, we pray truly in this hour of worship that you would once again send our hearts and give us fresh resolve to recognize that in all the chapters and seasons of life you are present. You are the God who addresses us, reminding us, yes, of our share in the pain and brokenness of the world, for we do fall short. At times we long to advertise our goodness and the ways in which we avoid that which is evil, but to be truthful. There are times, even if it be but in our thoughts and our intentions and our desires, that we too long for revenge and destruction. So center us in this hour, so that truly we might know that you are good and that your love is not only for us but for all. Soften our hearts that truly in receiving your forgiveness we might be in a better position in the power of your spirit to offer it to others. Focus our minds so that truly we might sense ourselves grappling with your word, grappling with life, grappling indeed with the ongoing ministry to which we are called. 
and indeed in your forgiving love, strengthen us by your Spirit, so that truly we might rise to our full stature and know ourselves as human beings created in the image of God, sharing stories, sharing moments of connection and belonging, loving and giving. Come, loving and gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and indeed in our adoration of you, let us also be honest in the expression of our need for forgiveness and healing. Let us also be open to the ongoing movement of your love made real. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, who pours out his spirit upon the church this day and all days. Amen. Now we see the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. My kingdom come, I will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. You too can change the world. That's the world held in the hands of a child, being molded and shaped. And we're sharing the story. We remind ourselves that the world is always changing. We're always telling stories to each other about who we are, about who we belong to. I've mentioned two stories. The story of the Jewish faith that started with a man called Abraham, where God chose one man and built a nation. And that nation said to the whole of the rest of the world, there is one God and we are called to worship and honor him. The second story, the Christian faith, from those people, one man again by the name of Jesus, came and shared the love of God and said we can all, whatever land and language we belong to, all of us can belong to a story that tells us about the love of God. There's another story as well that says, there's one God, and that's the story of the Islamic faith. But I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to go into some countries. And one of the countries I mentioned, many of the people who live there are of the Islamic faith. And that's our first country today, and that's Bangladesh. Bangladesh, it's a, a wonderful country, wonderful people, but very poor people. And one of the reasons why it's so poor is because it floods almost every year. It's a whole series of little islands and most of them are only about three meters which is a little bit taller than me above sea level so when the rains come it washes a lot of things away there's good times when the rains come because it brings fresh soil so people can grow uh, food to eat but then the winds come as well and it blows all houses and everything upside down and inside out and so this is a a little family there that have uh, been busy farming and then one day the rains just came and washed everything they had everything they had right away a very sad story and it happens to a lot of people in Bangladesh year in and year out many of the people there as I mentioned belong to the Islamic faith some of them are also belonging to the Hindu faith and they say well you know, this is what sometimes happens. Life is never easy. Sometimes you have to start all over again. But there are also people there who belong to the Christian faith and they say, well, let's try and do what we can to build, to, to share, to care, to give. And that's what each one of us is called to do. Wherever we are, there's a lovely little song, Bright in the Corner where you are, or this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And so our first country that we're talking about, we're going to be talking about a few different countries, is Bangladesh. And we're going to be praying for Bangladesh, and we're going to be praying with the people of Bangladesh, because they're not only facing floods, they're also facing a lot of other challenges as well. And we're part of a big, wide world. Remember, I told you already, God's got the whole world 
in his hands. And we're starting with the letter B. Bangladesh is just one example of God inviting us to pray for people everywhere where they are affected by floods and winds and storms. And more and more people are being affected by those things now as there are more and more of us on this wonderful little place we call home, planet Earth. So let's pray, shall we? Loving God who spoke to us through Abraham, who formed a people and who spoke to us again in Jesus, thank you that you still speak to your people in many different ways. Give us ears to listen, hearts to be open, and lives that are ready to say yes to all the ways in which we can care, share, and give. Help us especially on this day remember Bangladesh in the floods, in the times of sadness, in the times even of fighting. Help the people of Bangladesh come to a wonderful sense that you love them and love them deeply. In Jesus' name, amen. chapter 5 verses 21 to 32. The context for our reading today is offered at the beginning of chapter 5 of the letter to the Ephesians and it reads as follows. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God. The simple invitation is to remember that we are all beloved children of God and so we must live in love with one another. This is, of course, difficult in practice. Each generation wrestles, wrestles with what this might look like in their families, communities and countries. We, we would do well even to add the earth as a whole to that challenge as we live in uncertain and challenging times. 
The author of the letter to the Ephesians applies challenges of love to, to the society in which he lived, which was a higher archaeal society. We are truly appreciated that much has changed, including models of marriage, but the challenge remains the same. How are we to love one another? It is a challenge that calls for careful listening, honest prayer and open hearts. May God give us the strength to truly love one another. Psalm 34, chapters 15 to 22. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears towards their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry out for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Amen. Enter, enter, that's our key word for today, our overarching theme for want of a better expression. As I've been reminding you, the last few weeks we've been with the letter D, the sense of dissatisfaction within the human spirit, the sense of grappling with what it means to be human. 
and to enter into the possibility of the divinity of Jesus Christ and then to be offered eternal life last week and now to enter into that life to make the positive move, the particular yes that says, include me, include me. So we're still in John chapter 6 from verse 60 onwards. And I'm going to read the passage and thereafter offer a few thoughts. Many of Jesus' followers heard this and said, this teaching is too hard. Who can listen to it? Without being told, Jesus knew that they were grumbling about this. So he said to them, does this make you want to give up? Suppose then that you should see the Son of Man go up to the place where he was before. What gives life is God's Spirit. Human power is of no use at all. The words I have spoken to you bring God's life giving spirit. Yet some of you do not believe. Jesus knew from the very beginning who were the ones that would not believe and which one would betray him. And he added, this is the very reason I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father makes it possible for him to do so. Because of this, many of Jesus' followers turned back and would not go with him anymore. So he asked the twelve disciples, and you, would you also like to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words that give eternal life. Now we believe and know that you are the Holy One who has come from God. Remember, I've told you that uh, John's Gospel is written from the perspective of the resurrection and quite literally, maybe, let's say a generation of reflecting on that in the context of the worshipping community. So it's written right toward the end of the first century of the Common Era. And so the uh, memory of Jesus now has become instilled in a worshipping practice where people are increasingly recognizing that in Jesus they find the author and giver of life. And it's laying the platform and the foundation for later reflection on the Trinitarian nature of God, which, uh, well, doesn't adequately become resolved, but let's say uh, moves towards some form of resolution by the end of the fourth century of the Common Era. There have always been groups of people who have uh, respected Jesus, for argument's sake, but haven't necessarily come to what one might call the uh, Catholic or universal understanding that in Jesus Christ we see the very embodiment of God in a specific human being. We see the very light of God at work in Jesus. We hear the call in him who is the anointed one, the Christ, to come to God as loving, compassionate and merciful Father and to enter life. And so John reminds us on the lips of Jesus that it is the Father that is calling people to him so that truly they might enter life. They might enter life, into the mystery. The mystery of what it means to participate in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. What it means to participate in the death and resurrection of the Christ. To enter into the mystery of the story. The story of the Hebrew people that have traveled down throughout the ages. And now in a specific one of their number. The uh, doors have been flung wide open to the world and said, oh, all are invited, all are included if they dare say yes to this unlikely, improbable and yet profoundly true reminder that God is deeply, deeply committed to the human race. The drama, the passion, the so-called Easter week of Jesus wrestling with the implications of God's reign and the human refusal to say yes to the demands, the challenges, and the gift of love. And yes, we still, many centuries later, still struggle and grapple with what it means to be loved and loving. The dance, the Lord of the dance, is one of our popular songs has it. The sense of the uh, perichoresis, the understanding of the Trinity, where we're invited into a dance, a dance that expresses something of God's extravagant, overabundant, and overwhelming love for not only for us, but for the entire world and the entire cosmos, for all that is created. The song. And so it should come as no surprise that even throughout this season, and we are deeply grateful to Alan for all his work behind the scenes and uh, for the reminder that it is we often how we experience the grace of God. We sing our way into participation 
in this great story. So enter, enter, enter the gift that is life. Enter, don't just stand at the door, but open it. And allow yourself to be drawn by the love and compassionate nature of God into this gift that is eternal life, as I reminded us. Uh, eternal life is not merely pie in the sky when we die, but it is a quality and depth to life here and now. An encounter, a fresh encounter with Jesus Christ. So that truly in him, we might find what life is all about. To enter in to the story, the gospel, the good news, the drama, the song, the invitation. But in John's gospel, particularly in chapter 6 as well, but right throughout the gospel, there is the reminder that this entering in is an entering into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's a difficult pill to swallow. And so people find that sometimes what Jesus says is difficult. But sometimes what Jesus says is demanding. And so, yes, it requires further thought and reflection requires an act of courage and decision. Just a few thoughts today in light of this as well, and I'm going to read a brief portion from Joshua as well. The first portion is, it requires, even demands, a deliberate choice and commitment. Right throughout the Bible, there are moments of decision making. Joshua is one such example, and forms the counterpoint to our gospel reading today. It's a, a scattered portion from John Joshua chapter 24, I should say, Joshua chapter 24. Different verses are difficult to follow, but I read selected portions. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together at Shechem. He called the elders, the leaders, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they came into the presence of God. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has to say. And then it continues many verses later. Now then, Joshua continued, Honor the Lord, so serve him sincerely and faithfully. Get rid of the gods which your ancestors used to worship in Mesopotamia and in Egypt. Serve only the Lord. If you're not willing to serve him, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your ancestors worshipped in Mesopotamia, the gods of the Amorites, whose land you're now living, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. The people replied, we would never leave the Lord to serve other gods. The Lord our God brought our fathers and us out of slavery in Egypt. We saw the miracles that he performed. He kept us safe whenever we went among all the nations through which we passed. As we advanced into this land, the Lord drove out all the Amorites who lived there. So we also will serve the Lord. He is our God. Obviously, it's a very optimistic proclamation in light of the Israelites' experience in the wilderness, as we already know, even from a cursory reading of the Bible, that they grumbled a lot along the way, that there were many slips between the cup and the lip, that many times what we say with our mouth is not necessarily what we believe to be true in our hearts, and yet the instinctive repeated reminder is that if we are to enter into the gift that is eternal life we need to cooperate with God's spirit and say a decisive repeated yes I choose I commit I want to serve you God I, I want to somehow find myself included in this family not only paying lip service to it but involved in it whichever way you call me to do that Tinker Taylor soldier, whichever way you call me to do that, whichever gifts you give to me, I want to return them in turn to you so that you can, using the uh, Christian word, sanctify them, make them holy, so that in turn they can be offered to the wider world and be a true word of life that proves eternal. Commitment, choice. Secondly, it requires perseverance. You want to give up? Most Jesus of his disciples. You want to give up? <laughs> yes, I do. So many of us, so many of us at one stage or another, maybe not today, maybe next week, maybe last week, want to give up. We want to quit. Saying enough's enough. Tried our hardest. We sought to cooperate with God. 
it's still challenging. Life is not easy. I suppose in many ways the ongoing question that people of sensitivity and faith ask is, where is God when it matters most? Where is God in the midst of the suffering, the anguish, the struggle, the fear? So many questions. You want to give up? <laughs> no. No, we want to persevere. We want to be partners with you, loving and gracious God, in this great daring dream that you have for the world, that indeed people might be transformed by grace and love, that they might hear the whisper of the Spirit, that even through our stumbling efforts, they might see something of your goodness at work. And finally, the repeated reminder that this gift that is life eternal that we are invited to enter is first, foremost, and repeatedly a gift. We can't add our little contribution to it. We can't make ourselves better. We can't pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. We can't become perfect. We are those who are, to express it in a, I suppose, a Wesleyan phrase, we are perfectly loved so that in turn, as we respond to that love, we are made perfect in love. We find that God is transforming us. God is shaping us. God is strengthening us. For all that we might face in life. We'll stumble along the way. There's no doubt about it. Times we will want to quit. Yes. Times we'll even lose a sense of where we are. But in the midst of it all, even in this challenging year and a bit, as we slowly edge toward returning to that which proves slightly more familiar to us, the sense of gathering, albeit in a restricted way, in the church building, we have been church. We have grappled with the invitation of Jesus to pray, to struggle with, to question, to be invited to, to participate, to sense ourselves part of the larger story. And this year, to be part of the company of those who were following in Mark's interpretation of the gospel. But now, particularly over these last few weeks, this great and glorious chapter of John, John chapter 6. And Peter says it well, and we do well to respond. You want to leave? Lord, to whom shall we go? You at the words of eternal life. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we come and we come again and again because it is so easy to forget. To forget who we are, to forget why we are here, to forget how we are being empowered for love. Help us then enter this life that is life eternal by making the deliberate choice in partnership with your spirit to say yes to all the ways in which you want to nudge us in the direction of life that proves enduring. Help us to be those who persevere, cooperating with your spirit. And when we want to give up, strengthen us. Give us just a glimpse of grace once again. Loving, gracious, caring Father who has acted in Jesus Christ. Remind us truly, this is first, foremost, and repeatedly a gift from your hand to ours. So that truly we might enter into life, appreciate life, live life, and share life. Jesus' name. Amen. The splendor of the King, God the Majesty, that all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice.
Multi-talented, multitasking God. It is from you that we derive our creative instincts. We are makers and crafters, designers and builders of relationships and social systems, of ideas and projects, of agreements and policies, of tools and artworks. Thank you that our lives are better for what has been made by hands and minds in our own generation and those of older and younger. Thank you for those whose skills and faith, time and money have brought into being houses of prayer, sanctuaries of worship. Thank you for all the ways that cathedrals, temples, monasteries have served your purposes, make visible a glimpse of your glory and grandeur, moving people into an encounter with you, speaking of your longer story that we are a part of. Today we pray for our brothers and sisters across the world who long for the freedoms we take for granted to worship together in a dedicated building or anywhere. Bring your comfort and protection to those who have lost loved ones and are themselves at risk of injury, torture or death because of objections and opposition to the faith they have professed and practised. We cry out to you for a world able to live and let live, a world able to celebrate the diverse strands of belief and ritual, affirming our common ground of treating others as we wish to be treated ourselves. Give us a curiosity for other ways of understanding you. Surprise us with the insights of other paths to you. You are mystery, you are intimacy. Give yourself to us that we may give ourselves to you and bring alive your kindness and compassion in all we do. These are all the concerns we carry in our hearts today. We bring in Jesus' name. Amen.
open to the Spirit, we are constantly those who are saying yes to the greatest story ever told. The story of God's love made real in Jesus Christ. I invite you to enter, yes, into that experience so that truly we might exit into the wider world as those with the love of God upon our lips and in our hearts. Go therefore in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen.